And now I don't know if we would actually want to, to go to a convention. <laughs> Leaving the house? Gross. I don't know. If if we didn't have to pay for it, maybe. Uh, <laughs> no promises, but... Uh, Not sponsored, yeah. but could yes. be. Yeah. Wawa. Hey. Hey, buddies. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to an episode of Pointless Discourse with myself, Apocalypse. And take two D-Pain, I now have voice wobbles. This doesn't make sense to anybody else. <laughs> we, had, we, we used up a whole three minutes of recording time, just out the window. Exactly. We lost three minutes. Let's not look at the hour and chunk <laughs> that we spent talking. Where I'm we, just going to be yawning. The whole time, don't mind me. <laughs> well, I just thought it was funny because we're both like, "Yeah, we got nothing, nothing new to share." And then it was like, "Book." And then it's like, "Well, hold on, my God, we all got something to share about books." So that went for a while. Um, that being said, uh, we do have a book incentive from Charity Palooza. What's yeah. the what's the date of Charity Palooza again to remind anybody who may not have caught it in a previous episode? It is on July twenty second, two thousand thirteen. As I quickly go through my notes to find the Charity Palooza stuff, there it is. It's Charity Palooza five, and yeah. So I know we said them before, but. Um, I'll just mention the ones that are important here is uh, we hit five hundred dollars to me on the charity event. Um, we will be, as I wrote in here, pointless discourse book fair, uh, where I don't know what it's gonna look like, but we're gonna talk about books. okay, it's gonna be the pre-show band <laughs> that I don't know, I guess we'll just record that. <laughs> But that will be a special episode, and I don't know. If people like it, maybe we'll do more or something. Who knows? No promises. We're not here to promise more work. We're just here to promise charity. And then I guess the next one, the 750, is it's loosely adjacent, uh, tied to this as uh, it was a, an original idea we had when we, we had dreams of going out and being in conventions and now I don't know if we would actually want to, to go to a convention. <laughs> Leaving the house? Gross. I don't know. If if we didn't have to pay for it, maybe. Uh, <laughs> no promises. but uh, Not sponsored, yeah, but could yes. be. Yeah. Wawa. Hey. Hey, buddies. <laughs> With your hoagie fests. A hoagie fest would sound like a fun convention. Um, <laughs> but yeah. We... Um, yeah, I'll be... Unless other people want to join, uh, we'll, I'll be doing a milk ranking stream where I will go purchase a bunch of different milks and rank them. Tasty. I hope so. <laughs> hope you're not lactose. I'll find out. Ah. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> that would be a real fun end to that stream. So it's like, oh my gosh! <laughs> um... But yes, uh, as we mentioned, it it's a, a little bit on the later side, and so we are talking about Gravity Falls and Agent Power and Agent Trigger. They were behind the scenes in several episodes. That's the fact that is written here. They they were not behind the weirdness in Gravity Falls. They were just behind other people when we were observing Gravity Falls. They should be behind it all. Um. After making their first appearance in Scaryoki, the duo can be seen spying on Dipper, Mabel, and the rest of the crew in other episodes like Sock Opera, Seuss and the Real Girl, The Love God. Uh, they really tried their best not to be spotted, but did you notice them? No. <laughs> the <laughs> wiki I, noticed them for us. Yes. Just how I didn't notice Blendon the majority of the times in the background, I didn't notice them. Segway. <laughs> yes, we have... Another episode, fe this time featuring Blendon. It's been a little while since we've heard from him, but this is a fun one. And I mm -hmm. guess we can roll our dice before we jump into it because my brain is sleepy and I've used a lot of its functioning today. 
And I went to the gym today. So even my body is tired too. How was he? <laughs> I, there's no way I can explain it without sounding gross. Because I was going to say, I left sweaty and tired, and that doesn't sound good. <laughs> it was good to, it was just good to leave him in the past. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We didn't leave on good terms. Okay. So I've got my app. You've got your dice. Yep. So go ahead and roll your dice. We roll dice to see what we're, uh, which one of us gets to talk about the episode. And we roll a 20-sided dice because we play uh, various role-playing games. Uh, I'll admit, I did roll, and then I rolled again just because you said, well, let's roll our dice, but I'm going to, out of honor, I'm going to keep my original number. Okay, you ready for me to click? Yes, I'm not looking. But by the way, even though it will be cropped out, I have so much room I can look around now. Like, look at that. I've anyway. rolled. I think oh, I'm yeah. going. Oh, yeah. I rolled a 10. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled my a 19. Second, my second number was a 3. So it was just <laughs> like, I, yeah. All right. So do you have anything else you want to squeeze in before? I, I guess I'll just share the one thing that I said before we found out that my mic wasn't recording. Um, this, uh, this episode, I thought, was two different episodes. <laughs> it does thought... feel like a long one. <laughs> that's There's what you said in the of... that's what you said in the Whoa. unrecorded. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> Am I having deja vu? No, I'm just repeating myself. It's the Matrix. There's eight cats. <laughs> <laughs> um Yeah, it's uh I don't know. It definitely feels like it could be like after watching it, it's definitely one episode. Like <laughs> it's ridiculous to say. But it, it feels like there's two storylines. And, that are pretty uh, important. Yeah, and it's like they that definitely work together, but at the same time, it's like these are two different episodes, and who knows? Maybe it could have been, and they're just like we don't have a good beginning for one and an ending for the other. Just <laughs> slap them together. I would be impressed if that was the case for this one because I felt like everything tied in really well. Yeah. But anyway, on the thirty second draft. <laughs> dun dun. Wow. Yes, but we are here, and we are watching as Blendon Blandon is escaping from prison wearing uh, a cloak, and you have uh, the time mi- the time police that we met much earlier in the show, Lolf and Dungren, when Mabel goes to win her pig. Uh, they are the same police that come arrest Blandon then for misusing his measuring tape, to which he blames the kids, and, you know, Blendon ends up in prison, mm-hmm. and... Uh, the guy with the name tag Dungren admits that like this guy is uh, or no one's ever broken out before and Lolf is like well he's either got to be really brave or really dumb to which we see Blandon <laughs> run into stuff trip over trash cans and go ow my tiny knee and Dungren goes yep the dumbest one <laughs> <laughs> so they go up to arrest him and he starts to like uh, freak out when they ask him for his last words and he decides to invoke Globnar and everybody starts whispering around them like Klobnar. And they say, like, very well, who would you like to um, or speak the name of the accused? And Blendon says, the two kids that ruined my life, uh, Dipper and Mabel of the 21st century. And he opens up a tablet and there's just a video of them hitting each other with bats <laughs> and like staring off into space. And they said, so be it. Uh, may the time baby have mercy on their souls. So then after the theme song, we find them in front of the vending machine of the mystery shack to which um, Dipper and Mabel are chanting for candy and Seuss is able to um, help them once the candy gets stuck. And Seuss is basically like, you want to know a trick? A genius taught me that once. Keep that one in your brains. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then Mabel starts going uh, to eat it and Dipper... Uh, compliment Sue saying he's the greatest person alive and Sue says he would do anything for this family to which you hear Grunkle Stan shout that he wants to scratch two places at once and Seuss is like alright gotta go <laughs> but then um, they find that he's left his wallet and they go digging around in his wallet and they find out that he has a membership card to uh, Laser Tag and uh, Dipper is like I didn't know they let grown ups in there and they start laughing about it Mabel pulls out 
salami with a sticker on it that says emergency salami and she says that her <laughs> respect for Zeus has grown mm-hmm. but then they pull out his license plate and they read like his full name and his birthday and find out that his birthday is in fact the same day that they've done this and they say it's weird that he didn't tell anyone so they decide to throw him a surprise party so then they start uh, setting everything up and Mabel is trying to make it the biggest most extravagant thing ever she's yelling at uh, Grenda to put more exclamation points <laughs> on the sign and that Mabel says that they are birthday experts and they have all this set up so then they blindfold Zeus and Candy leads him and Zeus is like you promised a giant hummingbird so I'm expecting to see a giant hummingbird so then they remove his blindfold and he gets confused and everybody shouts surprise to which um, Mabel shows off uh, there's cake flavored pizza pizza flavored cake and then you have the Raz Dazzler, and she removes the curtain, and it's uh, to- Toby determined uh, dancing around in a sequin suit, um, saying "Razzle Dazzle, friends!" <laughs> <laughs> it's the Razzle Dazzler, uh, and Seuss uh, is kind of freaking out. And Mabel forces them to take a picture, and when the picture develops, they see that Seuss is actually frowning in it. Dun, so then. Dun, dun. Seuss excuses himself, uh, basically like, oh, I gotta go fix something. And Wendy shows up and they're like, oh, you don't realize Seuss hates his birthday. And she says that it's a total mystery and they don't know. He's never talked about it, but it's got to be like weird personal business. And it's been ever since he's a kid. And Stan says that he petitioned the government to have this day removed from the calendar, which (laughs) caused him to be banned on airplanes and has like a mugshot to prove it. I was like, I don't think that's why you would get banned off of airplanes, but okay, Grunkle Stan. It's a good cover story. (laughs) But then you see Seuss looking at a postcard uh, that says, hello from New Orleans on it, and he sighs. And when he's basically like, maybe just leave him alone for the day. But Dipper and Mabel are determined to find a way to make him enjoy his birthday, to which they drag him off to the laser gun place. And Seuss kind of is like, as much as I love laser tag, uh, I don't know if I'm up for it. And uh, all the time they're kind of making fun of the facility. I think Wendy is like, are these mattresses taped up to the wall and just spray painted purple? And Grunkle Stan's like, oh, I'm pretty sure it used to be like a mattress place or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they start preparing for the battle. And Seuss is, uh, bends down to tie his shoes, to which Dipper and Mabel run into the facility, excited to start. And then uh, as they're running in, there's like a, a big white cage that appears. And Mabel's like, whoa, this place is cooler than I imagined. Look at these real laser guys. She proceeds to kick one of the time <laughs> police in the crotch. And it shouts out, kick deflected. Thank you for buying Digicod, the smart cod piece. And Mabel's like, wait what (laughs) and when they turn around they see the portal slowly closing like the bars are down and they start to disappear and dipper is worried but uh to leave seuss behind because that's the one promise they made and you see seuss kind of walk into the regular room that's left behind asking for where everybody is and uh what is it oh they disappeared to go find the milk and to go get the milk and it was in a, a get white milk room. and cigarettes <laughs> yeah they they ended up in a in a white room a milk colored room um but yeah so as they're trying to bang on the walls to see if they can find a way out one of the time police explains that it's made out of time tanium <laughs> and that the only way out is through um uh, you see the floating head and like hands and feet of blend and blandon and he's like, through me. Oh, wait. Uh, and he starts messing with his watch until he finally has his normal gray sweatsuit. He's like, okay, that's what it would have been like if I had just gotten it right the first time. But it still looks uh, effective. And Dipper and Mabel are like, it's that time traveler guy. His name is um, Blendo? Blondin? And Dipper's like, blar, blar. Blar, blar. <laughs> yeah. And Mabel, they freeze. <laughs> To which Blendon is like screaming his name and his full birth name is Blendon Blenjamin Blandon. And he was like, how could you not know my name after you ruined my life? And Dipper and Mabel were like, ah. (laughs) 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 So then Blendon forces a flashback to where it's, they explain the first time they met is when they stole his time device to be able to go back in time to get the perfect date with Wendy and to get um, Waddles. And that ever since then, he was cast out of the Time Anomaly Removal Crew, which is his whole life's purpose. 
and he's been given 10 squared life sentences in time prison and he spent every day planning his vengeance uh, to which it shows Blendon drawing a shape of Dipper and Mabel out of like mashed potatoes and then he smashes their faces in and he's like now I have my revenge and Dipper's like look we have something important we have to do <laughs> and Mabel's like yeah it's our friend's birthday and Blendon's like uh, some dumb birthday matters <laughs> and then he says welcome to Globnar yeah. to their final travels open up to like a gladiator style arena but neon pink and you have different people and different neon um, obstacles that they're fighting through it's so Tron some, <laughs> yeah Tron and the show gladiator yeah American uh, mixed gladiator together. yeah so the examples they list in the wiki are falling through portals, being set on fire, fighting a glob monster, battling on a moving clock, and fighting one another with age-altering weapons. Mm -hmm. To which Mabel's like, is this a reality show? Are we in Japan? <laughs> and Blendon explains it's gladiatorial time combat. I will and say, uh, real quick, that uh, Blendon's whole, like, I just put it, put it a little bit together. It reminded me of a, another villain in a time travel show that we both watched <laughs> erased mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the same thing of like this kid ruined my life and i don't think uh, that character uh, planned everything out like blendon did but it's very much like <laughs> he's just very much like this kid <laughs> <laughs> but anyway yeah Oh, I'm okay, I promise. Prove it! Oh. Count uh, to 32, but... and another cheese. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so then, as we see people start to like win and lose, Blennon explains that the winner gets a time wish, and decides the loser's fate, to which we see uh, people that were battling out earlier. Um, the winner uh, holds up a thumbs up, then makes it a thumbs down and smiles. And the guy that lost screams while being vacuumed away by a purple beam of light. And Dipper and Mabel are like, Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and Blendon explains that the two of them have been officially challenged and Blendon walks away to try and get some more paint set up. And then Mabel is asking Dipper, like, what do we do? So Dipper says that he has an idea and then, um, we're coming back for you, Seuss. And they go back to Seuss, who's uh, confused and lost. He's asking for Dipper and Mabel. And he starts to get hit from by lasers from all directions, to which, of course, Robbie shows up and shoots him. And he goes, uh, laser Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but back to Seuss, just being confused and lost and looking for his buddies. Mm -hmm. So then in the arena... Their plan for that Dipper and Mabel come up with is distracting. Uh, I think it's Lolf. And he goes in and he, she starts explaining she's his great, 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 great with Dipper. Like signaling how many greats to do. And then he stops. And she's like, great grandmother from the past times. And he looks at her and goes, gam, gam. Gam, gam. <laughs> to which Dipper steals the time device that looks like a measuring tape off of his belt. And Blandon is still putting on his war paint. And he spots Dipper stealing the time device and says that they can't let them escape and to stop them. And uh, Halof is like, Gam Gam, how could you? <laughs> She's like, I ain't no one, Gam Gam, sucker, you got time tricks. <laughs> As uh, they start to go in slow motion and they start to use the time device to try and get back to Seuss's birthday party. And as they disappear and they go into it, they fall and lay on a mattress. And Dipper explains, he's like, oh, this place is the mattress store that it used to be. We went too far in the past. And Mabel's like, why is time travel got to be so complicated? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, they get followed by the time police in Blendon. And they say out loud that they missed guests by 10 years. And since they can't find them, they go running off to find them. And uh, Blendon runs off first, screaming that he wants to find him, and he's, like, stuttering. And the time police both agree that they just hate Blendon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep stammering until you find them. I, 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 I. <laughs> he just runs away. <coughs> this, this is a question I do have, because they do show this in different parts of this episode, of, like, can't they just look up where they are? Like, I know why, from a narrative standpoint, the, the, why they don't. But it's just, like, they have the technology. They can just... 
They look should be it able up. to. Yeah. And it's and the other side of it, this always annoys me with time travel in anything, where people are like, We gotta make sure we can get back in time for the for Seuss and it's like you literally are traveling in time. You could come back to the exact point in time <laughs> to so that Seuss legitimately never knows you left. Mm-hmm. Like that they put him through like 10 to 15 minutes of torture by himself as he's like, guys, where are you? As he thinks he's been abandoned. Whatever. I'm getting ahead. It's just my my beef with Your a lot of cents. times. <laughs> that my two cents, this is a, what was the other? <laughs> when did I do this? I forget what episode it is. I have something to say. And then I skipped right to the end of the episode or movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, so then... Spoilers, everybody, if it wasn't clear in episode 27. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so then we have Dipper saying that all they need to do is go 10 years ahead to be right on time for it. But when they look at it, they notice that they must have run it over when they were going to leave because like, they were all jumping on the beds and Dipper and Mabel were hiding underneath one of them. So the time device looks broken now. And... Mm. Dipper goes, uh, I know where to get some tools because they see a sign to go to the mystery shack. And they head out and they're like, let's, you know, be careful about it because we don't know what changes we might accidentally cause in the future. So uh, as they're walking through town, we have um, Tyler, the get em guy, sitting and mm-hmm. listening to a boombox distracted. Uh, Sheriff Blubs is, uh, has an afro. You see Tats is getting his very That's first okay. tattoo in the tattoo shop. Ba- baby's first tattoo. And then Th- this is my a, favorite. <laughs> yeah, and then there's a billboard that shows uh, Bud Gleeful and like an infant version of Gideon, and it says, "I just had a baby sale." And people graffitied it and replaced "baby" with "demon" and like drew on like <laughs> Horn. <laughs> horns and tail, and a demon tried it. And then um, it says RV was here, so naturally, Robbie. Mm, I couldn't remember Robbie's last name. <laughs> Valentino. Yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, Mabel remarks that they're 10 years in the past and everything is samey, but also different. And they see, uh, Toby is dancing in like a dancing studio to which Mabel, for some reason, decides to run <laughs> up, smack on the glass and tell him this dream goes nowhere. And he goes, oh, marbles. Cause he was planning to go to Broadway with those dance moves. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. while they're walking up the sidewalk, this part I forgot. They're walking up the sidewalk, yeah. and Tambry and Wendy, as little kids, uh, kind of stop their little, like, trikes, like the ones that, like, are plastic, and you're mostly sitting and, like, pushing your feet forward. Mm-hmm. And Wendy uh, leans over and whispers something to Tambry, and Tambry looks at Dipper and says, my friend thinks you're cute, to which Wendy pushes her off a bike and tells her to shut up. <laughs> and Dipper blushes and goes, oh, wait, this you're, like, super young, so this is weird. And Mabel's like... Now you know how she feels about you, you creep. He was like, hey, uh, oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. It's also when we, were, when we were talking about books earlier, that other book. <laughs> Age gap. Age gaps are weird. Yes. Uh, but yeah, so then off screen as they're approaching the mystery shack, they hear Stan talking about his latest attraction, a man made of wax, and several other people made out of wax because it's a whole wax exhibit. Remember. Call back, call, call back, back to the all those boys and gals that he had purchased. Uh, so they run in and they find a screwdriver after jumping into the mystery shack, sitting next to a thing of tools that was left open, and uh, they see a little kid standing there who's like, "Oh, come on, candy, fall!" And he like bangs on the glass, and Mabel walks over, does the bippity boop. And does what Seuss did earlier and says jackpot and sees that the door is open and hands the kid candy. And the kid goes, thanks, dog, and walks away with the candy and says, you must be some kind of genius. And uh, Dipper was able to use a screwdriver that he found to fix the Tape time device. Yeah. yeah. And then Mabel uh, points out that it's baby Seuss. And uh, Abuelita walks in. <laughs> and says that you know you're gonna be late for your big day if you stay here so they walk off and mabel's like this must be the birthday uh we gotta find out what happens and dipper's like all right but we got to be quick about it so they end up at a birthday party and they realize it's Susan's birthday there's a bunch of kids running around with friends and um 
it's eventually abuelita is like i got you a race car cake and seuss is uh enjoying it when a kid sits down at like the head of the table and seuss tells the kid that he can't sit there and the kid's like who's it for he's like oh it's my dad i haven't seen him in like eight years but he says he's coming today and he runs off to the front door because he hears the doorbell and is like rearranging himself to make sure he looks good and the mailman says uh he has a postcard for seuss and the postcard is that hello from new orleans postcard that we saw in the beginning of the episode and it says sorry champ couldn't make it this year real busy again see you next year for sure signed dad and uh his cousin reggie who we saw in the <laughs> in the fake girlfriend episode mm-hmm. uh, with giffany is like don't sweat it because you'll see him next year and seuss is like yeah sure as he opens up uh, a whole shoe box full of these postcards that all say the same thing from different places across the u.s and their grandmother's like i have presents for you and she plays uh the key on the keyboard yeah. which again <laughs> seuss yeah. has with them later and he oh, still d- walks does off it say what noise it makes i i think uh, i lost it does say yeah 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 <laughs> just Oh, yeah. Now I rolled too far to <laughs> Abilene to the next line, which is just great. Um, but yeah, so then Dipper is like, oh, so this is why he hates his birthday. And Mabel's like, hmm, can partying fix that? And then Robbie runs up, shoots Dipper in the face with a water gun and goes, dorks, young Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> a brat his whole life. <clears throat> I know. Um, then we have, like you said, Abuelita is, uh, speaking in Spanish and yelling to herself, saying that Seuss's father is a deadbeat, and if he ever shows his face here again, <laughs> she'll tear him limb from limb, and walks in to offer him dinosaur-shaped cookies. <laughs> He's like, call myself <laughs> <laughs> center, Seuss, I made you cookie-shaped like dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah, and she's trying her best to be nice and encouraging, saying, you know... You'll feel better someday, but you can tell Seuss is down because he's like, he's always busy. So then Mabel was like, um, this is uh, just awful. And Dipper is um, saying like, we promised him a happy birthday, but how could we possibly do something like that? Like, we can't fix this. Mm-hmm. And then you hear off screen uh, blend in saying that he's there. So Dipper is like telling everybody to hide. And... Uh, Blennon's like, they've got to be somewhere. I heard him. And he looks at the tree and Lolf uh, says freeze, shoots a laser gun at the tree, which blows up, showing Robbie, who runs away crying. (laughs) Serves him right. (laughs) (laughs) And Blennon explains that the sooner he defeats the kids in Klobnar, the sooner he can win his time wish. And uh, Dungren says, you know what I do with the time wish? I'd retire early and spend more time with the kids. And Blendon's like, um, <laughs> yeah, with the kids, don't you? <laughs> I didn't realize that's how that word is spelled. <laughs> I don't know if that's how it's spelled, but, like, I'm just going with what I remember. Yeah. But Blendon keeps explaining, like, how anything can be solved with a time wish. Why do you use it on something so meaningless? Because there's so many possibilities. And then Dipper's like, wait, the time wish, as long as we beat Blendon. Um, and Mabel finishes a sentence saying that, that they can wish Zeus's dad to come back for his 12th birthday, and then all of his birthdays will be fixed forever. Mm-hmm. And Mabel's like, do you really think we can win Globnor? And Dipper's like, it's the only chance we have besides it's for Zeus, and he would do the same for us. So they surrender, and they point laser guns at him, and Lolf says, careful, they're from the past. They might have powder muskets or slap bracelets. Equivalent Dean of dangerous objects yeah but dipper agrees that there's no tricks and they're gonna agree to go to the challenge and they cut off a blend and screaming globnar because yes (laughs) (laughs) his little mute uh, symbol appears above his face (laughs) yeah lolf is like hey turns out i can mute him and dungren's like hmm wish we had known that earlier (laughs) yes i so then i didn't know i did as we were reading through this i found out uh, I'm a year older than Seuss. <laughs> oh, given the birth of years. So. Yeah, I, Seuss is, yeah, just uh, a year younger than I am. So. Wow. So yeah, so then uh, they teleport off to the arena, and the whole crowd is shouting Globnar repeatedly. And on a large screen at the edge of the arena, a large hole opens up and the time baby floats up out of it. And he screams, screams <laughs> silence. We've seen the time baby in, is it the conspiracy one about the guy who's a true uh, p- 
founder of Gravity Falls. Because doesn't he have oh, a description? Yeah. And there's like a little video of the time maybe ruining everything. He, I can't remember. I know he's been shown a few times. Um, but I can't remember when. I, I can see if I can find it. I will say that... The time baby cracked me up. <laughs> this is when he comes up. Silence. <laughs> yeah, we hear silence, and everyone's like, "Yeah!" And then just shoots him. <laughs> just like, ah! yeah. Mabel's like, "That's one big baby." And the time baby uh, explains to uh, welcome tributes. Uh, I have a very important nap to get to, so let's make this quick. Um, you have the chance to settle your time for you through gladiatorial combat. Okay. And then oh, I, I I can save time baby stuff for afterwards. I I found it. Okay, uh, and then a robot. There's like robots floating around to assist time baby who's on this floating platform. And this robot brings an hourglass shaped uh, bottle with like a substance that looks like the universe in it, like the galaxy pattern. Yeah. And they say that um, you have until the time baby has finished drinking his cosmic sand in his hourglass. And they go to feed the baby, and the baby does what babies do. No, I don't want it. And they're like, come on, it's good for you. <laughs> Except it's, stop, no. <laughs> Just like deep voice. Leave me alone. Yeah, but Blennon essentially admits that his wish is going to be that the two of them were never born. And um, Dipper says, a dream all on the beating us. There's two of us. And Mabel says, we have hair. And Blendon says, what do you think I've been doing in prison the whole time? I've just been training for this moment. So then they go off and begin. So they show, like, uh, a screen with points on it that has, like, upwards of triple digits. They both start at zero. And um, all of their handcuffs fall off. And then Blendon starts screaming, naturally. So then they mm -hmm. have different events. Uh, they start off with fighting with the sticks on the clock, but it looks like nobody told them the rules because as soon as they start the fight, they get hit by the clock uh, hand that's spinning around and they fall over and then blending gets points. Um, then they have cycles, like you said, like Tron, and then the twins uh, end up winning that one out. And then they have, uh, it looks like they're playing chess, but then a giant uh, monster with a clock for an eyeball comes down and ruins the chess set. And they all run away screaming, but then they chase it into like a room and it shuts the door on itself. <laughs> um, and then there's like flashing uh, images of Blendon chasing them on a giant wheel. And then they have like a hot dog eating contest. They fight in robotic cuckoo clock suits. They have a wheelbarrow race. Uh, they fight with spears on unicycles on a tightrope. Uh, Dipper swims through clocks to get away from a time shark. They play something that looks like a giant version of Jenga. Uh, a clock is seen. An announcer sings Globnar. And they're working together to push the clock face monster, yeah, like I said, through the door in the wall. And Time Baby congratulates them on the uh, defeating the Cyclops. <laughs> and Blendon is winning by one point. Where Blendon has 764 and the twins have 763. So the time baby says there's only one challenge left. Uh, it's an ancient game, thousands of years old, chosen for its exemplification of pure strategy. And he announces its laser tag. And that the first person who touches the victory orb uh, will win. And Dipper's like, laser tag? Mm -hmm. And Blendon's like... Oh, it doesn't seem that challenging now, but wait until the fog machine rolls in. You're done for. And Dipper immediately shoots him and you hear, hit. Hit, hit, hit. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so Dipper's like, Mabel grab the orb to which she's already running up to it and got, gets it and wins. And then Time Baby with cosmic sand all over his face uh, shouts that it is finished. And a robot shows up behind him and proceeds to burp him. And the kids have the score of 999 beating Blandon out and he starts screaming. So then the Time Baby goes, what do you wish for? <laughs> And Blendon's like, oh no! And you get Mabel's like screaming face. Well, it's Death! before the wish. What 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 fate do you want to decide for the loser? Oh uh, yes. <laughs> and Mabel screams Death, and Dipper's like Mabel, and she's like, sorry, I got carried away. It'd be funny if, to, if the baby's like, okay, <laughs> done. Um, but then Dipper says something really adult and boring. He says maybe if we cheat him right in the present, he'll turn out better in the future. So then they say that they're going to set Blendon free, give him his position at the job, and Mabel finishes it off by saying to give him pretty hair. 
and <laughs> Blendon's basically like, why would you do this for me? He's like, I got my job back, though. I feel like hugging somebody. And he looks at Lolf, and Lolf is like, I can kill you in uh, eight different ways. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> As he puts his hands down. <laughs> and then Time Baby likes to squish his own face when he talks to them at this point. He keeps squeezing his like little butt baby fat <laughs> cheeks. And he asks, uh, <laughs> what do they want for your time wish? And they say that the wish isn't for us. And he says, if not for you, then who is it that is worthy to receive such powers? So then we cut back to laser tag and Zeus decides he's going to flip a coin to see if he's going to stay and find out where the twins are or just go home and make himself dinosaur shaped cookies. Poor boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then everything slows down as he goes to flip that coin and he starts to play with a coin as it's stuck in midair and goes, well, that's unconventional. <laughs> and then behind him, there's a whole bunch of noise and they teleport in and the twins shout out to Zeus and Zeus is like, oh, good guys. <laughs> and Dipper apologizes and says they got caught up in time travel junk and starts to explain about a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, clearly confusing Zeus, they just go, you know what? Uh, we know how to fix your birthday. Zeus is like, wait, you guys did all this stuff for me? And Blendon's like, that's not all. Uh, he, he brings out his um, time wish and says that he has the power to alter the time paradox free in any way he chooses. And Dipper is like, well, you can meet your dad. That'll make you happy, right? But we're not going to force that on you. And Zeus is like, I can finally see my dad by touching this thing. And you guys battled through time and space just to get this for me. And he pulls out the postcard that, again, we've seen throughout the episode, which is the New Orleans postcard. Dipper's like, what are you waiting for, Zeus? And Zeus decides, uh, he puts his hands on the wish, and there's a bright white light. And Mabel and Dipper are all cleaned up from all the dirt that they had on them. And they go, they get confused, and Zeus is like, bam, I fixed you guys up. And Dipper's like, what about meeting your dad? <laughs> and Zeus, also being an adult, is like, um... It, What's the point of it if, uh, all right, what I should do is spend time with people that care about me, but his dad is clearly not someone that did care because he had all the opportunities to visit and he never did it once. Whereas mm -hmm. the twins, uh, fights monsters through time and space just to make him happy. And, uh, whoever his dad was can just take a hike and he throws the postcard away in the trash and he says, I know who my family is now and it's you two. And he hugs the twins and says, you know, thank you for the best birthday. To which Blandon freaks out. He's like, that's what you do? You have a whole time wish? The and and uh, he's like, you wasted it? And Zeus is like, oh, no, no, no. I got this piece of pizza. And uh, it's infinite pizza, which, and he like takes a bite and it regenerates. Mm -hmm. And I can do that for like infinity. And Dipper's like, oh, cool. And Blandon's like, hmm, good time wish. <laughs> yeah, everyone's like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And Zeus is like, there's still 10 minutes left and asks if they want to play. And they all agree and run off laughing and, you know, give him a happy birthday. And then we have the credit scene, which ties it all together. You have little baby Zeus in his backyard uh, coming out because he heard an explosion. And he sees a screwdriver that Dipper originally used to fix the time machine or the time device. And it has Mr. Shack written on it. So he wants to go in and just return... Um, the screwdriver and what i didn't realize is it says that that's deputy darland i didn't recognize him oh let me close the thing yeah <laughs> now i'm thinking uh, about it yeah i guess that would make sense so he uh stan says that he's the worst handyman he's ever seen and Seuss is just there to return it. And Stan goes, hey, gum, gumdrop, think you can fix a golf cart? <laughs> and Seuss is like, uh, I don't know. And he throws the question mark shirt at Seuss and says, you're hired one size fits all. And then proceeds to go to the crowd to get more people into the mystery shack. And Seuss uh, gets a happy look in his eyes, mm -hmm. looking back at him. So well, it all ties together. And, well, earlier he was like, like wistfully looking at the mystery shack shirt at the beginning of the episode too before mm -hmm. he left but it, i guess it also like this episode I, I think uh shows like a lot of the connections between different characters of just mm -hmm. especially like why seuss loves the pine so much like as but, his own family yeah like why he is so dedicated to to stan even though stan treats him like dirt 
Like, <laughs> it's, uh, like, I don't know. If it was a different style show, like, we would learn probably how Stan is a little bit of a father figure towards him. Like, mm-hmm. Like, I don't know, at that age, it's, like, a pivotal age in, like, child development as well. And, like... Because I would put him at, like, 12. I, I think they do say he's 12 years old. I thought yeah. it was. So, um, so yeah, it's... So, with that, between that and just, like, a few other things that... I don't know, it's... Even though, like, in my head, it feels like... I, I remember it as two different episodes. It's like, yeah, it's... It, uh, it is together, like, it's, it's a episode all put together, for sure, mm-hmm. with a lot of great connections. There are a few things. First off, uh, the Time Baby is the last son of an extinct race of time giants that weighs, that, and weighs approximately nine trillion tons, and at some point in the past, it, it was frozen in an Antarctic glacier. Uh, according to the Northwest cover-up, mm. um, that's when that's when we see like uh, there's a report where Thomas Jefferson, uh, it, a few things. Thomas Jefferson was just two kids on an overcoat. Current president is actually Santa Claus. Under the reign of Mrs. Mr. Claus, America is not a democracy but a jollyocracy. The statues of Mount Rushmore are actually gigantic presidential-faced robots that are called into action when America needs them most. And then an enormous evil time traveling baby from another dimension is frozen in the Al- uh, Atlantic glacier. Uh, fortunately, the glacier never melts, so we should be fine. And uh, and then it goes on to say a few other things, but it's according to the article here. Due to global warming, it is freed, and uh, at some point in the future, which we see in the first time Blendon shows up, because that's when Mabel and Dipper are popping all throughout time, and that's. Uh, I think it's like a thousand years in the future when he kind of takes over and mm-hmm. then and then we we get all that and then there's other stuff that happens later in the show um but there's other things like there's it says there's many revelations about Zeus in this um which most of these just scanning through we already know um so um but yeah, some other things in here. We already know about Toby Determined. Um, it's, it's a... Oh, okay, yep. Yeah. Uh, that one we know. Or is, there was one in here. It's Yeah, so it shows that Robbie and Thompson are apparently friends for a while. So we're Wendy and Tambury. Here, there we go. That's what I was looking for. Uh, the Burnt Tree by Abaretz's house was burnt by Loft's laser. So... Apparently, there's in the in other episodes, there's just a blasted tree that's never grown back, mm. and uh, it was blasted by there. Just like I don't know, I feel like when you have time travel coming in, that's how you have to make all these different continuity like connections, which they do in the episode and then outside of it as well. So. Um, but yeah, other stuff that's there. We already mentioned Tat's, um, first, getting his first tattoo. Um, yeah, the Dipper crush is Dipper Mabel, cr- or w- Wendy, not a, not a Dipper Mabel crush. That's, <laughs> that's a different head of weird, set of weird. Um, yeah, we mentioned the Headhunters with the Wax Museums, uh, and uh, apparently, the wax Sherlock Holmes from Headhunters is shown, uh, at least the exhibit for it. Um, the secret behind. Okay, yeah. So apparently, in Susan and the Real Girl, um, and uh, apparently in one of the shorts that they did, there's an exploded tree in there mm, so that's why it says it's a continuation. yeah yeah so that's that's where it comes from um there is uh once again blendon um giving uh showing locations and stuff from his suit for stuff that's about to happen in the future um which yeah none of these are really uh worth bringing up but, um, so, yeah, anyway, uh, 
just with the way this episode was was done it's uh yeah a lot of the revelations and and continuity we kind of already talked about because it's it was just one of those episodes where a, a like it was a a lot of stuff did happen like we care like in the end dipper mabel and uh seuss's relationship didn't really change if anything it was it just it, got stronger yeah it was, it was stronger and but it, if it was one of those things where it explained why different things were happening in the past and stuff and um i don't know i guess like a different side of of abelita uh <laughs> just like, she's like which rightfully so and um the one thing i i, I do think was um uh, okay, here's an also fun thing. His full name is uh, Jesus Alamanzaro Ram- Ramirez, and Zeus is just the l- last syllable of his word, as is a nickname. Um, but one thing I did find uh, interesting, I might have to go through, I'm trying to s- see if it's in... A quick overview here, but I'm not seeing it. I'm, I forget um, Seuss's cousin. Um, yeah, I mentioned that he is the one that says like your dad's gonna come back. Yeah, around. yeah. I I, can't, I was trying to remember his name, but I thought it, that was interesting because it's like it's <laughs> the only other interaction we have with them is like Seuss, like oh no, he's getting married and all this stuff and just everything. But it's like from the little bits and pieces that we see, it looks like he like there was a like he's not a jerk to him and so no. yeah. oh and it's also kind of funny to look back at it because his grandmother's like you're such a ladies man and, yeah and he's like those are my cousins yeah and then you have future her like where are my great grandbabies <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i don't know i remember having conversations like that with uh with my mom and, <laughs> and she's like when are you gonna go have kids? And I'm like, why do you? Why are you worrying about that? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. Is it question time. I think so. So, Hop, who is your favorite character? As I try to find the the spreadsheet in my many many tabs. I think my favorite might be Lolf. Either Lolf or Dun- Dungrind. They're both very fun. They, I know that their yeah. name together is a reference uh, to Dolph Lundgren, but I, Lolf's line of, I can kill you in eight different ways. And then Lolf is also the one that found the mute button for Blended. So I think I'm going to go Lolf. Yeah. They they gained a personality. Mm-hmm. They're not just uh, mean old guys that are chasing down Dipper and Mabel for the time device. <laughs> yeah. They're mean old guys because they have guys like Blendon that they have to deal with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're great. <laughs> uh, time baby. <laughs> yeah, that's a given. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it was just as soon as he showed up and whenever he was just talking, it was just cracking me up so much. I'm like, <laughs> I don't remember this dumb baby being so funny. <laughs> it, I was like. What sold it was literally like silence. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I know my answer. <laughs> <laughs> Easy, done. Check. Yeah, the box. it just also cracks me up as he's having like this like serious conversation with uh, Dipper and Mabel, just like you must complete the challenges as the robots are like trying to burp him and like wipe his give face. him his bottle. And he's just like, stop, stop it, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, he was, it was a, he was a fun character. I agree. Um, so that leaves me with most like, so we have Dipper and Mabel that are trying to be fixers. We have Seuss who's sad. We have Wendy and Stan that are kind of like, I know that he's like sad. So we just let him be sad instead of force, a, force him well, to do anything. Which Wendy though? Cause there's two Wendy. There's young I'm Wendy. Going, yeah. Um, I don't relate to young Wendy. I don't think so. Not in a long time. Well, um, let's let's look at it. Wendy, young Wendy looks and sees a two D boy and just like oh, cute. He's three D in her dimensions. Are, are, do you know that? They're the same dimensions. Yeah, two D. 
<laughs> um, the other thing. Think- oh, sorry. To, uh, there's one thing as I remember watching it, and I couldn't get over it. But Mabel has a neck, and just the way Dipper's head sits, it covers his neck. But it does his neck where it shows like kind of his, his, che- his chest area, like where his shirt kind of comes down, and it looks like his neck is like as thick as his head. And I'm like, <laughs> what the heck is going on here? Sorry to to ruin that for for anybody in the future, but. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. What? I'm done yawning. Um, I was gonna say I think I'm probably most like Seuss, where if given the opportunity to wish for something, I'd be like pizza. Eh, it's already <laughs> like been done. Uh, I don't think having this incident, this one incident, is really gonna be worth it to change everything. So I'd rather like pass it forward with a wish mm-hmm. and just be like, I'm happy you guys cared enough, but like, eh. I'm not going to change my past because uh, what I have now is good. Mm-hmm. This is a completely different, and I'm not like stalling for time, but I, and I know as I said that. It, We're, I, it's 50 minutes. <laughs> yeah, but uh, this is just me looking at the list, and I know that we plan on taking like a quiz later to see how close it is. Is there a way to like, take all our answers and like make result tables of like i don't know if i'm explaining it right but it's just like hop said it's, rather than us counting it like it did it automatically like where it's you just you can get sums where you say match the strings and yeah. then you match yeah because that would be interesting to see like what our own perspectives were and then uh seeing like how close we we got to like different percentages or or thing if they have like a ranking i know some quizzes that we did have that um as i scroll back to to remember where everyone was um yeah because like the majority of these two characters is definitely like Mabel and Dipper, like, trying to, to figure out what they can do. Seuss, like, has his character re- relevate, like, I think just letting go of the past and moving forward. Um, and then, uh, Blendon just, uh, like, <laughs> just solely focused on revenge. <laughs> um, so I don't know. It's I I guess um, yeah, I don't know. It, it's <laughs> I'm gonna be Toby determined. Where people still call these me. dreams don't take you anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I'll prove you wrong. <laughs> no. Um. Yeah, it's, I don't know, it, it's, I always have a hard time with, like, especially ones with, like, there's so many characters, it's like, but there's so many characters and not, like, a ton of stuff. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's a character I would probably connect with a bunch, but he doesn't come in for a little while. <laughs> um, I will say I want to I think probably one of the twins because I just don't know which one um they both it's not that they aren't distinct this episode but they both are such on the same goal that they don't really have there's not much I, it's kind of I'm gonna say Mabel because there's so many times where people will be saying stuff and this could be due to the thing that a lot of people say I have, but it's like sometimes my brain will just skip through. Uh, should I say that? And things will just come out of my mouth <laughs> like death. <laughs> but uh, not that I told that to anybody, but uh, I could like, it's just one of those things where like, they're both wanting just to like to help a friend and like the, I don't know if I would go to the full extent that they they did or or all that but it's like i i work so much harder to help others and and stuff like that 
than I should than I than I do myself and I don't know I probably should focus on myself a little bit from here and there but it's just like I I get way more vote motivated and stuff with helping others when it comes like to to things when it's like helping others so not that That's like not yeah so it's like differ haven't I don't know it, in reality it's like I would be both but I had to choose one so I'll choose the funnier one fair enough also I realized in hindsight I mentioned that all the stuff that I would relate to Seuss I also have had miserable birthdays and I don't really like celebrating my birthday oh I forgot about that too I don't celebrate my birthday either hmm well, it's not that I don't celebrate my birthday. It's that people make me celebrate my birthday, and I hate the experience. I have specific memories of me crying on my birthday. So, like, me and Seuss. <laughs> I, I got you, Seuss. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't have those. I just, I don't like the attention. <laughs> also fair. Yeah, it's, I don't know. It, I, I just remember, I, I know the one, re- so my family would always go out, like, for birthdays. Like, for a birthday, like, where do you want to go? Where do you want to go? And I remember there was, like, a very specific year where i just like let's just get pizza and eat it at home and there was two reasons one i didn't want to wait in line at a restaurant (laughs) and two i didn't want people coming over and singing to me and i'm like i don't i don't have to worry about this attention so let's just stay home and get pizza to where like it can i'm pretty sure everyone in my family was just like why like why are you doing it? you could go anywhere it's like no let's just get pizza i don't want to go I don't want to go out anywhere. So, <laughs> and now I, I don't really go out to any restaurant that doesn't have a drive-thru. Mm, <laughs> leaving the house overrated. Well, I got to do it almost every day. <laughs> One of those days is with That doesn't niece. mean you enjoy it. One of the days I do. Okay. Because it's niece time. Time baby. Yeah. I mean, no. Normal baby. Yeah. No, nah, she's toddler now. It my brother posted a picture in in the group on my my brother group chat and uh it's like she's at the age where it's like physical features are getting a little bit more defined and it's like wow when she smiles a certain way i can really see his ex-wife <laughs> so fun yeah so but it's like hey that's what kids are a little mishmash of their parents um i don't want to imagine time baby's parents <laughs> big Big bald jello, <laughs> but, but yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you everyone for uh, if you made it this far. We appreciate it. Double appreciate it if you interact with us in some way, which is either or else. like, like, subscribe, <laughs> comment, rate, review, share with a friend, ending in all the bub multiples. Um, Cancel your plans to listen to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I'm tired, so I don't know what else we usually say. Hi, tired. I'm Hop. And what we normally say is I'll go on for a little bit and make it sound like I'm going to talk for another 30 minutes. But instead, I'll just say, (laughs) bye-bye.